in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come, having, I'm going to start with that preset, and I'm going to go over here onto the right hand side, and I'm going to start just tweaking some of these sliders. And there, you can see I've got them all opened up. Now you might find when you first install the program, you've got uh, brightness, contrast, and structure, and just those three sliders. There's a little triangle next to each of those, which if you click it, opens it up and gives you fine control over all the, uh, the the stuff underneath. And this is where the power of Silver Effects really lies. So I encourage you, open all of those up and uh, and really get to grips with how these sliders work. And I'm, I'm thinking here that, that to begin with, I, I do need more brightness. It is, it is a high key look I'm going for. And I'm going to start with the dynamic brightness because the way this works is a bit like that um, uh, uh, the vibrant slider in Lightroom, it's going to affect different brightness values depending on how bright they start out. So the idea is that this, I will, well, maybe Nick can correct me on this, but my impression of how this is supposed to work is that the dynamic brightness is going to generally increase the brightness of the image without wrecking the, the uh, structure of the image, without wrecking uh, you know, the darker tones. So it's going to brighten stuff up but hopefully leave you with a good contrast. Um, so I'm going to just push the, the highlights around a little bit and let those go pretty bright. And I'm going to mess with the midtones a little bit. And I'm starting to get that high key look I'm after. And I can grab my shadows now and drag those down a little bit just to give it that bite again, just like I did in, uh, in Lightroom. I think I might have gone a bit too far with the highlights. Let's just drag those back. And then my contrast slider, let's just see where that goes. I'm using the soft contrast, which if I drag it right down, you can see that's pulling all the tones together. But again, we've still got a good range of blacks and whites. This is, it gives it a sort of an HDR effect, which is horrible for portraits, but up towards the right hand end, that's what's giving it this slightly dreamy quality. Um, it's giving it that slightly fuzzy, dreamy quality, which is rather nice. And we've got an Amplify Black slider, which just helps us work on those darker tones and an amplify white slider that does the same for our lighter tones and I think if I if I just drag those amplify whites down a little that will probably let me brighten my highlights again up here that's working pretty well so you can see I'm going for mainly white on the face and I'm just going to let it darken a little I'm not it's not going all the way to black just around around her forehead there um, Look at this, broad lighting. You can do broad lighting on young people like this. So they can get away with it. I wish you, you couldn't do that on me. I'd look awful. Um, so so uh, this, this girl, is uh, she, can, she can have an almost uh, blown out skin. Because she's got such soft skin already, she's got such smooth skin, um, it really doesn't uh, hurt at all to have that. Uh, one of the other things that, that you might be wondering where it is, um, your typical black and white conversion these days has got the option to, to tweak the brightness values based on the color starting point. Um, now, uh, Silver FX takes an approach that is very traditional as though you were using color filters on the front of your camera. So you're not going to be able to say, I want to make green this bright and blue this bright and yellow this bright like you can in Lightroom. But what you can do instead is you can say, right, well, by default, we're going to just use a straightforward desaturation of all colors. Or we can do a red filter, which you can see, because skin is generally orange, is going to make the skin that little bit brighter. We're losing uh, brightness uh, in the lips there. The lips are starting to vanish a bit. Let's try orange. The lips are starting to come back a little bit now. Still largely very bright on the skin. Yellow goes just a little bit further in the right direction. A little bit of... Detail coming back on the lips, uh, skin, skin still very bright, green probably too far in the other direction. If none of these buttons here is, is what you want, we can actually then drag the, the hue slider here at the bottom to exactly where we want it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just choose somewhere between yellow and green and just get uh, the light skin I was after but with just a little bit of darkness on those lips. I'm going to do a little bit more about those lips in a moment, but uh, it's really very much in the right sort of place to start with, which is what I'm after. Um, so the next thing that really grabs my attention about this picture, I'm fairly, fairly happy with my brightness tones now, um, but there's a couple of little problem areas. Um, and we've got 
uh, still in Silver Effects here, we've got some uh, localized adjustment options. So we've got this button here, Add Control Point, and if I click on that, I'm looking up here at this light area of, of hair. So obviously it just caught the light. Um, it was closest to the, to the light source, so it, it is going to catch the light. Um, but if I click on that bit of hair, I get all these little sliders now. And if I drag the first one, I can say how big I want this adjustment region to be. So it's going to affect everything inside the circle, and it's going to affect based on the uh, what, what pixels the dot was on. So it's going to try and choose similarly coloured or similarly brightness value pixels. And if I drag the brightness down a little on there, that's going to just start sorting out that area. I might just increase the structure a little bit. And I might just work on the whites and just to amplify whites down a little. That might just allow me to brighten back up, actually. Um, let's just do a little bit of contrast. Just tweaking these, these until that little area, let's make it smaller actually, that little area is just coming back to life. So if I go over to here now you can see we've got control point one lit up in orange, because that's the one I'm working on. I can turn that on and off and just see what that control point is doing for me on the main image there. So just bring in a bit of detail back in that in that area of the, of the hair. If I hold down the option or alt key I can click on that, that dot and make a copy of it and drag it over to here uh, and in this case I just wanted to sort out there's a little bit of hair there that was, that was disappearing into the brow line I don't really want it to be quite such a strong edit here but I do just want to emphasize a little bit the the line of hair there so you see if I'm turning that on and off um, I'll just click away turn on, on and off control point two you can see it's just putting a little bit of detail back on that that little bit of the brow there just to keep that line visible to, to the viewer. And uh, um, the other thing that I think I could still do a little bit of work on is the lips, which are still a little bit lighter than I would like them. I'm going to click Add a Control Point. I'm going to click on the lips. I want to choose the, the bit of the lip that's got some colour in it in the original starting image. So I'm going to choose that bit of lip there that's, that will have been pinky coloured. And I'm going to just darken that down a shade. And that should give me just that little bit of darkening that I was after, so before and after, on and off. You can see that's just helping just a little bit, just to bring that. I think actually I might have gone too far there. Let's just let's do a bit of structure instead. Adding structure is a bit like the clarity slider in Lightroom. It's it's kind of a localized contrast enhancement. So it's going kind to of, things that are next to each other that are light and dark next to each other. It's going kind to of emphasize that difference. Um, I think, um, yeah, I'll leave that alone. I think that little bit of structure boost is going to help more than the darkening that I started with. So uh, you'd think I'd research these and know what I did ahead of time, wouldn't you? But no, I like to I like to make it up as I go as I'm recording these videos. So anyway, um, that really uh, is uh, the end of of what I was doing in here. I mean, there's a couple of things we could do. We could we could take this shoulder here. Um, bright part there and we could just drag that down maybe a little uh, and the same on the hand but basically you can see where this is where this is going um, all that remains really from this point is, is just a load of messing around and tweaking these sliders until things look right until they look the way you want and I think that's that's pretty close to the sort of image I had in mind um, and at that point you hit the save button and back it goes into Lightroom, and uh, and there we are, all done. Send it to the model. Hopefully, the model's delighted. Um, that's that's the idea. Um, and of course, post it to your Facebook, post it to uh, your Twitter, post it everywhere. Make sure everybody can see what a darn fine photographer you are, um, and enjoy the plaudits. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in uh, a future video. Um, doing loads of work at the moment, so hopefully. So hopefully, fingers crossed, lots of um, uh, lots of videos coming for for some of those. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye bye. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. 
Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. Thank you.